Hey guys, this is Insetic. Originally I was just gonna do Jet X 2 by itself, and then do a couple other games, and then maybe consider doing this game Splashdown, but for some reason I felt I, I, I just wanted to play Splashdown because I was getting annoyed with Jet X 2 So I played it, and they're both Watercraft games, and they're actually kind of... They're actually pretty different, like Splashdown is much more re oh, more realistic, not like super realistic, but they both differ kind of in varying ways and one game's weaknesses might be the other game's strengths, or one game might do something better than the other game, so I decided to show them off both and I decided to pause for her horrible voice acting. Also, Blank Tester's with me. Yeah, boy! So, basically, you, uh... I mean, did you did you decide to do this after you saw that, um... That... What, I can't remember what his username was, but he suggested that, uh... Suggested Carve and Splashdown, and obviously you didn't have Carve, but... I was wrong when I said that he didn't have Splashdown, because apparently he did, and so... Um... Ma Maui... Okay. I heard... I read Mall USA. Um, real quick... Uh, we were watching this video right at the beginning. It showed a bunch of CD covers for soundtrack. I saw a couple uh, popular CDs or popular at the time. One that confused me a little bit, KMFDM. Yeah, they've got a song. Also, that's right. It's Smash Mouth. How many times have you thought about Smash Mouth since the beginning of this video? Well, no, before the beginning of this video till now. Okay, I should probably start explaining things pretty quickly before everyone gets lost. Splashdown is a game released in 2001 by Rainbow Studios, who basically made the ATV vs. MX games and the Cars game, like the one based off the uh, Pixar film. And basically, that's the only stuff they make. Oh, uh, well, they're disbanded now. Woo! Yeah. So, Splashdown takes the form of circuit races around... 20 different courses and also one good thing they have is if you go to career mode you can choose before each event to do kind of a like uh, oh I don't know what it's called but like a placing event where if you skip it you just start off in the back of the pack fifth place but if you do the event and you go through you've got three laps to get a good lap time and if you get like a good lap time you can start in third place second place first place so it's a good way to get familiar with the courses if you haven't played them before like since you can't unlock them until you go to circuit mode and win them that's that's an interesting idea i i, I like that uh it's it's an, it create oh my god that voice acting is awful um explain this tricking all right the trick the tricking system is Actually, it's kind of weird, because if you looked at the uh, loading screen, there were three tricking buttons. L2, R1, and R2, but L1 was looking back with the camera. So you've got three tricking buttons, and to do a trick, you hold a button and then push in any direction with the left analog stick, or the D-pad. But if you just hold the button, you won't do a trick. So there are 12 basic tricks, because doing diagonals doesn't count. But then, like, you'd think, okay, you can maybe then hold two of the buttons and then push a direction, and those will be the more complex tricks. Nope. This is, it, it's a really weird system where, like, the more complex tricks, you have to do special button combinations that you'd really think would be for, like, signature tricks only. Like, for a roundhouse, you hold R1, then you start at the left with the analog stick, then you rotate it up over to the right. And that's a trick. But they don't stay the same for each button. Like, you can't do that for L2 and R2. There's different stuff. Like, one trick is hold L2 and then push up, then down, then up. And basically, they're just, like, random. And if I hadn't read the manual, I wouldn't know what half of them were. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You read the manual? Most used games come with a manual, thankfully. Really? Well, at least most I've bought. So. You just said botten. Yeah. What are you, a botanist? The silence is deafening. If only there were the crickets. 
So you can actually choose to skip the uh, placing events with the square button. I kept not doing so. Well, I mean, it's it's always good if you can if you can get a good enough lap that you can start in second or first place. But if you just want to skip straight to the action, who's who is this music? Uh, this song, I don't remember who it's by. This isn't Smash Mouth. I thought it was, but it wasn't. Um, another thing about the soundtrack, there's only like 10 or 11 songs in the game. So much like Sean Palmer, they'll start repeating very quickly. And they're, you know, popular songs from 2001. So you have Smash Mouth, you have Blink-182, you have Sum 41. <laughs> I love how I love how we just went through this phase of w word number bands, just just so many of them. So if you enjoyed that, then you'll be you'll be okay with that. I mean, I don't I don't out I don't outright hate any of the bands then, but it it, it was it, some of the some of the music is kind of period of its time. However, I should mention, I I don't know maybe people get mad at me. Sum 41, kind of an okay band. Most of their songs are pretty shitty. However, In Too Deep is an amazing song. It's like, really good. It's not in this game, but I just felt like I should point that out. I, I don't think I've ever heard enough of Sum 41 to know any of their songs. Uh, well, the two songs in this game, uh, they're just kind of generic ones. However, like, the... The, the, the songs that seem to pop up the most for me, like when I played through the game the first time, they're not going to show up for a while, so you're just going to uh, hear random stuff. What the fuck was that? There was a lot of me shitting that up, so let me explain. You may have seen the, the red glowing thing and the yellow glowing thing in the air. The Well, those aren't power-ups, but those are wetsuits for characters that you can collect. Uh, one, you just go off the ramp to the right, but the other one, I think you have to, like, do a sub-dive, which was also in Jet X 2 where you, like, push up on the D-pad or left stick and go into the water, and then you push down and you, like, shoot out of the water. But if you do that too steeply, you shoot, like, straight out of the water and start doing a backflip like I did, and then you, like, just mess everything up, and then you hit select and reset instead of crashing. But um, those, I guess, are sort of like collectibles. There's eight characters in the game. Only four are unlocked at the beginning, as you saw. And each character has five uh, wetsuits they can get. See, there's the red one. Oh, okay, I and that. there's the yellow one that I was trying to subdive for. Um, and so if you collect these, I guess, these show up uh, under the characters in single events. Also, some races can just be won with a well-timed stain to the inside, as you saw. Yeah, that was, um... Are you skipping around? Like, are you, uh... I, I don't know, I didn't watch you edit this video, so are you, like, like cutting this together? Or is this, like, raw, just raw footage straight through? Um, some of it's raw footage. I'm actually speeding up the load times for the levels, because they are too long they'd be like 15 seconds 20 seconds sometimes so i've sped those up kind of by like a third and yeah um i love seeing these oh i, I now i remember what i was thinking before this but uh the uh all the product placement for uh what's it called again? sea -Doo? i love how they have so much for sea -Doo. and i mean i get I get Sea Doo makes you know what what you call it jet skis, but you know usually they have more sponsors than that to put more. And I mean I see there are some others. Ow! When I'm at the game store, I can usually tell when a game is going to be really bad, like an, an extreme sports game, of course. I can usually tell when it's going to be crappy and when it's going to be bad. If on the back cover it advertises how many professional brands they got. For the game like not advertising gameplay but advertising how realistic it is and such and well you can't say the realistic part because i would say a lot of it well okay maybe for extreme sports games but for like 
sports games in general, if they if they show if they they advertise realism, then that could just mean that the game is built on strict physics and whatnot. But the but I, I, I know what you mean. Like when you're looking at an extreme sports game and you look at the back and it's not advertising its itself, it's advertising the people who paid money to make this game. That's sad. So, I should probably start mentioning kind of the comparisons between this and Jet X 2O, and what one game might do poorly that another game does well, and such. Jet X 2O definitely playing off of SSX has large courses that are downhill, you know, you don't repeat them at all, has huge jumps and kind of a more in detail tricking system, you know, with tricks and then tweaks. However, the bad part of that is that the actual controls, well, the controls are fine, but the levels really push you around, and the AI also pushes you around. Like, it's tough going where you want to go. However, Splashdown, so it has circuit races, so they're usually, like, a little bit quicker than other games, such as Freak Style, which had, like, seven to eight minute long races. But also, the the way you control, the way you move in the water, it's just really good. It's just tight. You know, that's kind of a weird word, but when I take a turn, I feel like I end up going where I want to go. See, I don't I don't have to overcorrect like a ton of the time. I I'm, I'm really in control of where I want to go, and it's just a very solid experience. Yeah, I can see that, right? I mean, I didn't, I wasn't noticing it before, but I can definitely see that. I think um, another thing that you could fault Jet X 2 for, uh, that you, you probably can't fault this one for, uh, unless I'm not thinking straight, uh, Jet X 2 because of its similarities to SSX, doesn't kind of, kind of doesn't branch out on its own, uh, if you know what I mean. Like, it doesn't try something different than what worked and Splashdown looks like they they entered the and like they started making the game with the idea that they were gonna make a game all their own all right every four races um like the fourth race the eighth race the 12th you get to race sort of in in a stadium in a one-to-one -one head to head competition where you pick a character even one of the four you haven't unlocked yet and you get to race him and it's just you two and if you beat him beat him or her you can pick to race as him or her for a any of the other races in the circuit so i pick jeremy here just because he's like the fastest he's got full acceleration and he really does come in handy and also the stadium is the introduction of these sort of turns i don't know how but they speed you up like you just go on the turn and it makes you go faster now it doesn't turn for you so you have to try to hold on and sometimes it's throwing me off but these are the uh, these are the successful me winning the event um, recordings and so these are actually pretty cool because you know it's fun to imagine if this if these existed in real life and you went to an event you know how cool would that be uh, that I think that would be actually very entertaining. I'm not even a fan of going to sporting events, and I think this would be a really cool thing to see. Now, this would be a ton of water, and I can see how they would make the... Uh, also, it would be extremely risky, but the I can see how they would make the uh, the turns. I think it would probably require, like, jets of water on the ramp that's turning, if that made any sense that's pointing in the direction that they, they want to force your jet ski to go. Um, but this is, again, like, this goes back to what I was saying about the, uh, you know, trying something new. The I don't I don't think I've seen this in another game. Um, and it's an interesting, it's a cool idea. Uh, it keeps things fresh. It's not uh, the same sort of gameplay every time you play a level, you know. You hop on a jet ski, and you are you might be doing this, you might be playing one of the uh, traditional levels, you know, and and I think this is a, a this is a good addition. 
It, yeah, this is sort of a weird example, because I'd kind of consider the game sort of basic, at least compared to the other extreme sports games I've done. I mean, look at Downhill Domination, they had to make massive levels for that. Look at Jet X20, again, those levels are actually pretty big. And this is just kind of a circuit-based uh, race track, uh, sorry, game. Where if you compare it to the other games, it, it does look kind of n not as over the top, but again, like I said about the controls, it's just solid and really isn't bad. Right. Like, when I, when I say they're trying new things, I don't mean they're trying a lot of new things, because clearly they're not, they're not really going out of their comfort zone, if that makes any sense. Like, they're not... Like, all of this scenery and everything in the game so far appears to just be... I mean, it seems very standard, but what they're doing isn't the same as what everyone else is doing. Even if they don't put a lot into the game. You know, I mean, you, you said this game is not nearly as over-the-top as the other games, and that's a very clear statement. I mean, like, look at that water, look at the ramps. Everything about this game just says... Big open areas that have stuff. Open areas, but controlled sections. If you go outside of the buoys, you have three seconds to get back in. Um, but, it, yeah, like, it is basic, but it is also really the only one of its type. Except for the uh, sequel, which I've heard gets more extreme than this game. But it's telling that this game was the cheapest. Out of all the games I've bought. How much was it? Only five bucks. Well, I mean, compared to like six dollars, seven dollars, but everything else was a little more expensive. That's, yeah, that's... Yeah, I can see why. I mean, it's not like a two dollar game, but it's not... I mean, if you're looking for an extreme sports game, this barely qualifies in the extreme department. It definitely qualifies in the sport department. Yeah, I, I think of it kind of how I think of Sean Palmer. Also, the game does not like it when you sub-dive under the finish line. <laughs> but wow. but I, I had time to spare. But I, th I think of it like how I think of Sean Palmer in that even though I'm putting it under the Extreme Sports Games mon m moniker, uh, I guess. Yeah, it, it, it's almost more of a relaxing game for me to play. You know, something that, I don't know, if I, if I mess up, I can just get right back into it. Something that's not going to royally uh, screw me over too much. And something that I ultimately find pretty enjoyable. But that's been the first four. Uh, there's still a couple more things to cover, as well as 16 more levels. Yep. But if you think this game is interesting, then of course go uh, and buy it, play it. I've heard the sequel is better, but I don't own it, so that might not come for a while. It's called Splashdown Rides Gone Wild, if uh, you didn't know. Yeah, Gone Wild. Whoa! Uh, almost like they tried to become extreme. Tried. More. So, uh, yeah, make sure to join the two of us for the next set of four levels. Um, yeah. On the, on the next episode of Splashdown, whenever that may be. Bye.